Hey, it's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn about libraries in Photoshop CC. Libraries is one of those features in Creative Cloud that not a lot of people use and don't really know about, but it really is pretty powerful. It allows you to share assets through the cloud to multiple devices, even collaborate with other people. There's a whole bunch of uses, and I'm going to touch on a whole bunch of them, as many as we can, and kind of give you an overview of what all can be done using libraries. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. First thing we're going to need to do is get the library's palette open if it's not. And if you haven't used before, uh, you may not have it visible, but that's not a problem. We're going to go up to Window, Libraries. And this is basically what the palette looks like. Yours might look slightly different if you've used it before or you've got uh, maybe some different default on yours. But this is basically the window where we're going to have all of our elements. And we'll talk about what some of these things do. But first, just to kind of talk about libraries in general, what libraries are is a way to store and share assets either between different projects, between different computers, even between different collaborators. Um, think of it almost as a big bucket up in the Adobe Cloud that you can put things in, different fonts, different uh, colors, images, whatever it is you want, and then be able to access them later via the cloud. Now obviously you've got to have a Creative Cloud subscription for this to work and you've got to be connected to the internet in order for these things to share back and forth. But assuming you've got that part down then this will work just fine. And I'm going to show you some of the things that it does and it really has a lot of different features so regardless of what kind of photography you do or what kind of graphic design or whatever there's a good chance that you're still going to find some use in libraries and let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say this is your company's logo, your awesome photography and this is the logo that you've come up with and the, this is your color scheme. You always like to use this awesome logo in yellow and you like to use these different shades of blue and this is kind of your branding color scheme. Anytime you do any advertising anything you do always has these same colors. Well it's, it's gonna be important to keep that consistent and libraries is a great way of doing that. So let's look at some of the things from this that we can save over here. And the first one, easiest, is uh, for colors. What we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on what is the foreground color right here. The foreground color is your front box over here on the toolbar. So right now you can see our foreground color is set to yellow. Once you've got that set, all you have to do is come over here to this little plus sign foreground color. There we go. Then if let's say you want this lighter color here we just need to make it the foreground color so we click on the foreground which brings up this with the eyedropper we click on it hit OK now this color is our foreground color same thing foreground color. Then finally we want this blue we're gonna do the same thing click on the box click on the blue now the blue is the foreground color, add foreground color. Now these three colors that are our basic color palette are in here. Now they're basically everything is just not grouped right now. We want to make a group out of it. So what we're going to do is we can just actually click create group. And we're going to call this tutorial group. And it's got the blue in there right now. We'll just drag both of these in. So now in our tutorial group, we would probably, you know, again, if this was our logo, we would probably call it logo group or something like that, but um, you can name it however you want. Now let's next look here at this awesome font we've created, or that we're using, didn't create it. And um, if you look over here, we've got the word awesome. Now certainly we can just drag this over into this group, but what this has done is it's just given us the word awesome in yellow. You can kind of see here it's hard to see because it's yellow but it's basically this exact piece as if it's just a graphic. So we could drag it onto an image that type thing. But let's say we want to keep this whole just the whole typeface, the the size, the color, all that type thing. What we would have to do is come down here 
and do character style. Now what this is, Colors of Autumn, that's the name of the font, 76 is the size, all the settings that we have, including the color, which you can see up here, if we open another document, we can access that, and we'll do that here again in just a minute. Let's put it in our folder with everything else, and we'll do the same thing with Awesome Photos, the, the typeface that we're using down here. I'm just going to select it over here, do character style. And that's Apple symbols, size 27, put that in our folder too. So now we've got these two different fonts, the three colors, as well as this graphic. You can also add, we'll put this in the same folder, let's say you've got a uh, logo that you like to put on your images or your graphic designs or whatever. You can take that logo and drag it in here. And all these can be renamed. We can just call this... Um, PPT logo, whatever you want. One final thing you can toss in here just to get us started is textures. Let's say that this is a texture that you use a lot. We can put a texture in this folder as well. All right, so now the way this will help us is let's close this out and we're gonna hit new. I'm just opening up a six by six document. And let's say you are working on a new ad campaign and you want to use your same colors to um, build up another ad or something like that. You'd have everything right here in your library. You'd say, I want the background to be this, this light color this time. I can double click on that. It's going to make it the foreground color for me, as I can see there. Hit OK. I can click on my paint bucket. Just hit the G button. Now I know that it's the exact color that I need to go along with my branding. Same thing if I decide I want to have um, you know, a square in the middle, but I want it to be that blue. I can come right here, double click on this blue, hit OK. It's now my foreground color, paint bucket into here. Now I've got the blue. So I've got all my colors that I know I need. Now, here's another thing that you'll be able to do is let's say you go in and you're going to add some type. Um, our photography is awesome. All right, well, that is not the, the awesome font that we used on our marketing materials before. So if we want this to be that awesome Colors of Autumn font that we used before. All I have to do is come over here, double click Colors of Autumn, and it's changed it into the correct font. It's even made it the size it was before the color. We would just hit Command T to uh, scale this down a little bit. Now it's using the yellow color we want, it's the type of font that we want, and basically we can start creating more marketing materials where everything matches the same. This also works if you wanted to send this to someone else to do your design and you can share the folder with them. So let me show you how this works. It's another cool feature is I've got this group here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to share this over the cloud and the way you do that is you come up here and do get link. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate this link here, and I can hit copy link. Then what I can do is I can send that link to someone. So what I've done here is I've pulled up a private browser, so I'm not logged into my account. So this would be just if I was someone else entering this. What the person would do is they would basically put in that link you sent them, and it would take them to this shared asset folder. They can do a view by group. And here in the tutorial group, that person would have access to the logo we gave them, the awesome, the different character styles, the texture. All that stuff that we put in there is now available for someone else to use. And we would know that they were using the right font, the, the right color scheme, and all that type thing. So that is super handy. And obviously it's handy for you too. If you're somewhere else and you want access to something that you used on another document and you put it into your library, it'll be really easy 
for you to get and you don't have to go digging back for what was that document that I used uh, that certain font on and trying to find it which would be a nightmare at least it would be for me okay so let's take a look at a few other things that we can do with libraries we already looked at the texture option but I'm going to show you a way that we could really make this even better I'm going to go ahead and bring this texture in so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to double click on it to open up this document and then I'm just going to drag this on top of this image I'm going to do command T to cover the whole thing like this and I'm going to basically like I'm doing a texture overlay let me get my layers palette over here I'm going to switch this probably to soft light bring the opacity down to 50% or so and now I've kind of got this nice texture all over the image I'd probably need to go back and mask out some of it off of the face but let's just say I want this texture overlay on this image the cool thing now is I've done these things to it I can go ahead and drag this updated texture now into my group call this um, maybe soft texture now if I bring up another image again I'm going to double click I'm just going to open it up as a layer I'm going to hold down shift drag this on top of my image shift just centers it up now it puts that texture on her but as we can see here it's already done soft light 52 percent so if you've got something that you do to all of your images or you've got a whole group of them that you're wanting to work with it'll save you from having to drag in the texture each time and um, make all those changes you just put it in here the way you like it and, and it's all set so that's pretty handy if we wanted that logo to be on the image we could just drag that in here this little warning it's gonna make it as a smart object so we can make it big small whatever but up here in the corner I know it's not gonna look really great on this image but if we wanted to we could do it and so you've just got all your assets here and it's really nice for things that you use over and over so let's look at another thing we can do all right this one's really cool let's say that you have again a certain number of things that you do to all your images let's pretend we're gonna go down here we're gonna use some of these um, adjustment layers let's say you always do a uh, hue saturation and you bring your saturation down to it's not black and white but it's got really desaturated color that's just the look you like and you also on all of your images you always tweak the levels um, let's say you just always bring in your white an arbitrary amount and the other thing you always do is I don't know photo filter you always add this warming filter 20 percent doesn't really matter but these are three things that you do to all your images and that kind of gives you this pastel look well then what you can do is I can basically I'm gonna hit this is already selected I'm gonna hit shift and click the bottom so that they're all highlighted I'm gonna put them in a folder and I'm gonna call this I don't know my antique look now what we can do is going back to libraries is I can drag this antique look into the library and there it is sitting right there so close her up now this image could be on a whole different computer we could be working on our laptop now and we say you know what I want that antique look that I used on that other image I go right to my libraries I'm gonna double click on it it's going to open it up like this all I have to do is drag this on top of her I'll bring her layers out and then as you can see it's put this antique look on top of this image and all of our settings are here now probably it's not always going to be the same you're going to need to go in and change the lay uh, you know I want the uh, levels to be a little different on this one maybe make it a little lighter I don't know um, but you can go back and change all those things but it'll basically get you in the ballpark of what you do to all of your images and so that is a great way of kind of creating almost an action that you can easily access and you can share it uh, again with people if uh, you've got someone else you work with that wants to get that exact same look you can share that library with them and they would have access to that folder that does all the effects to it
Now, if you want to see everything yourself, the way you would find this is go to assets.adobe.com. And you'll have to be logged into your account, but as long as you are, it will bring up your folder. You come over here to libraries, and you can see right here, we've got the untitled one, which we were working on. Inside that library is our group, the tutorial group, and there it is. There's all our colors, the texture, the fonts. It's all sitting right here where we can access things. We can go through and delete them here if we need to. Um, do whatever type organizing we need. So the last, but certainly not the least feature of libraries that we're going to discuss today is using libraries to access Adobe Stock. Let's say you're putting together a graphic like this and you need an image of, um, let's say, penguins. It's going to check my library and say, no results found, I don't have anything of penguins. However, I can check Adobe Stock. When I click that, it starts checking into Adobe Stock, and then suddenly I am bombarded with all of these images. And so let's say I really like this one. I can drag it into my piece, and it's going to come in as a smart object, which is always great. And we'll just put him right in there behind the logo. And we may have to arrange things a little bit differently here. And basically it would give me this low-res version of this image right here that I can look at and decide if that works for my piece that I'm working on. If I say, no, I'm not really crazy about that one. I like this one better. I'm going to drag this in until I find one I like. And we'll just pretend that this is my favorite. And basically it's going to give me this image that I can work with, um, at least as a placeholder. It will be saved in my library that uh, I can go back later and, and get this. But I can go ahead and work on this image, and at some point if I decide that, you know, maybe I put this together, show it to a client, they go, yeah, we love it, that's what we want the uh, ad to look like, then all I do is come back here onto the penguin, and I'm going to right click or uh, control click, license image, and that will basically pull up Adobe Stock where I can uh, go through to the website and purchase either a subscription to Adobe Stock or buy a license for this image, and it'll basically update things for me here in the, uh, the document I've created. So it's really cool. Uh, it gives you a chance to try out different graphics to decide what would look right without having to spend a ton of time searching. They've got a huge database, so it's a super handy feature. Libraries really is a handy way of either sharing with yourself if there's things that you use over and over, or if you share devices, or like I said, sharing with collaborators. It really is a nice tool for moving assets from one image to another, or from one workspace to another. So what did you think of libraries? Obviously we weren't able to hit on all the features. Uh, I'd love to know if there's something that you use libraries for that I didn't mention in the video, and maybe we'll put together a future video to touch on some of the other things that come up in the comments. So leave me a comment and let me know what features I might have missed. By the way, if this video helped and you find yourself in a generous mood, take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We really would love to have you back for more videos. Hope that helped, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.